video of the police shooting to the public. The chief releasing videos from four angles in a news conference earlier today showing the roughly four minute long confrontation from start to end. We see Leoya run and then struggle for a while and at one point there's a struggle for the officer's taser. The video ends with the officer on Leoya's back trying to control him and then the officer fires a single shot. We do have team coverage tonight. Kyle Mitchell is in studio with reaction from the NAACP. But we start with Byron Tollefson, who was out at the protest from the start. Byron. Brian and Sue, the protest has ended now. It wrapped up around 9.30 this evening, going on for four and a half hours. I'm outside Grand Rapids Police Headquarters right now where it's calm. The street is now reopened to traffic uh, right outside the police headquarters. The protest started around 5 o'clock at Rosa Park Circle where they held a moment of silence for Patrick Leoya, a few hundred people attending the protest earlier on, and the crowd grew. An hour later, they marched to the police department chanting justice for Patrick. Patrick calling for the unnamed officer to be identified and charged. The protest was peaceful tonight. However, before sunset, a few people jumped over the barricades right outside the Grand Rapids Police Department, and a few officers with riot helmets did come out after that. And at one point, firecrackers went off down the street, prompting a strong reaction from protest organizers. One of the leaders of the protest told demonstrators to remain peaceful, reminding them that is what the family of Patrick Leoya has asked for. And a round of applause followed after that statement. We spoke with a few people who led tonight's protest about why they came out today calling for justice for Patrick Leoya. I'm here today just because supporting because Patrick was killed by the police. Um, I believe under due process, under the law, uh, right now the officer isn't guilty. He's innocent and proven, until proven guilty, but I believe the officer needs to be held accountable for what he did. I did watch the video, just like it was at least almost 20,000 people that watched that video. It's almost 1,000 people out here. So, of course, people are honored about social media, but we need bodies out here. We need people out here supporting, and we need people out here truly wanting to see community change. It's hard to see so many people like me and, and others saying how much they want to get out of Grand Rapids because we are turning into another stigma. We are turning into another stereotype of all of these, all, all of these other unfortunate situations that's happened in other states and other counties. You know, we haven't... This hasn't, I don't even think this has made national news yet, but it needs to. We need to have the same energy. We need to have the same reaction. People need to know what is going on. We have seen some of the protesters from earlier still scattered around, hanging around downtown. But like I said, Grand Rapids downtown is calm right now after this peaceful protest lasting for four and a half hours. For now, live in Grand Rapids, Byron Tollefson, News 8. Okay. Yeah. Byron, thank you for the live update. That protest is happening in reaction to the video released today by the city. In it, you can see the moment the officer shoots and kills Patrick Leoya. We will not show you that moment here on air, but News 8's Joe Lafergi went through the video and breaks down the critical moments leading up to the shooting. We saw four video sources, the officer's body-worn camera, dash cam from the police car, a neighborhood doorbell camera, and the passenger in Leoya's vehicle's cell phone. It begins with a traffic stop at 8-11 that Monday morning. Despite information from Patrick Leoya's family that his car was broke down on the side of the road, the video shows the officer pulling Leoya over after discovering the license plate didn't match the car. GRPD is not saying why the officer ran the plate. Do you have a license? Yet, unnamed officer asked for Leoya's license. Moments later, we see Leoya walking away from the car. No, no. The officer follows Leoya. The two struggle. At some point, the officer pulls his taser. GRPD says the officer fires the taser twice. Both times, the shot goes into the ground. On the officer's body worn camera, the two struggle over the taser. As the struggle moves into the yard next door, video from the passenger's cell phone shows the officer on top of Leoya, struggling to control him. The officer reaches for his sidearm. You can hear a single shot fired by the officer. The officer then calls in that he shot Leoya. Moments later, other officers arrive. We do have links to watch the full video right now at woodtv.com. Tonight, we're also hearing from members of the Grand Rapids NAACP. They're calling for justice after seeing the shooting video today. 
And News 8's Kyle Mitchell is in studio with their response. Kyle. Brian, the president of the organization says it's been warning about GRPD for years. He says the family is calling for justice tonight, but also peace. We have constantly, constantly in this city been fighting for reform. Do you have a driver's license? Do you speak English? NAACP President Clee Jackson says license? the video should have been released much sooner. From the very beginning, when I got the call Monday morning when it occurred from city officials, and the first thing I said, in order to do this right, you need to immediately release any surveillance video technology that you have no matter how bad it is. Jackson says the problems are systemic and the NAACP has been warning about misconduct by GRPD officers. We've constantly, constantly been talking about the harassment and the brutality that's done right here. Now they're calling on the new police chief to be transparent and for major changes to be made at the department. As Dr. King said, where do we go from here? Chaos or community? This is a community moment. This is a community moment. And I'm hopeful that Chief Winstrom will get it together. I'm hoping that he will do the right thing and will continue to do the right thing. The NAACP's public safety advisor says GRPD has enough information to fire the officer now. Because if you ask me, looking at the video, it's evident that there was no justification for le use of lethal force. Jackson promised to pass on a message from the family as tensions grow. I met with Patrick's brother, Jimmy, um, for a while. Uh, and one of the things he made clear in the family made clear is that they want peace. And so I promised that we would fall in line. And the message that I give to community is respect the wishes of the family. They've asked for peace, uh, and they've also asked for a fair and unbiased investigation. The Leoya family will respond to the video during a news conference tomorrow afternoon with civil rights attorney Ben Crump. This will be Crump's second trip to Grand Rapids this week. He hosted a community forum Sunday after taking on the case. Crump also represented the families of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor. Sue. Kyle, thank you. Target 8 investigator Susan Samples also got the chance to talk one on one with Chief Eric Winstrom after the press conference. She asked him more about some of the policies in place at GRPD and about why the officer still has not been named. A policy question for you. When an officer, when a GRPD officer comes upon what could be a violation, a, a non felony violation, what does policy say about engaging in a foot chase and a struggle? Sure, and there is no foot pursuit policy per se. It's difficult to write that kind of policy to envision every sort of scenario that would that you would encounter in such a situation. So that's something we cover in training, and uh, extensive training, scenario-based training. You actually practice following people, uh, but. It's uh, so dynamic. Every situation like that is different, so there is no policy per se. Yeah. How do you train on w how to make that decision? Because because he could have held back, right? The officer, he could have. He had that discretion, right? Sure. Yeah. Sure. So, so how do you in training? Yeah. Well, we we do scenario based training. It's actually uh, with pretty much police actors, police actors, um, we do it a lot with use of force training. So transitioning from uh, from different levels of force options and going through scenarios. We have a pre-planned script of, uh, you know, what the acting police officer is going to do and see how the police officer reacts, tell them what the right thing is, what the wrong thing is. People in the community have been calling for you to identify the officer who shot and killed Patrick Leoya. You have not done so. Why? Well, you know, the officer is, uh, he's not been charged with anything. And just like I would treat a civilian who's, you know, possibly a suspect or under investigation for any sort of crime, until we get to the point where we're going to charge that individual, absolutely would not name him. Susan Samples with the chief of police earlier. And today we also heard from a close friend of Patrick Leoya. This was the first time that Jimmy Barway had seen video of Leoya being killed. After 14 years of friendship, he says that Patrick was like a brother to him. They both emigrated from the Democratic Republic of Congo, excited about creating a life here in Grand Rapids, like thousands of others. 
Barwin live stream the video showing Patrick's death, talking with us moments later. Right now, it breaks my heart. It really breaks my heart. That should have never happened to anybody. If you got him on the ground already and you can be ready to put the handcuffs, why, why, why execute him? Why? Make sure you stay with News 8 as we continue to follow this developing story. You can find our full coverage, including an interview with a use of force expert, right now at woodtv.com.